So out of all that expensive photo equipment you have, I argue the most valuable things are actually your images. They can't be replaced, so today we're going to be talking about backups and how to not lose your valuable images. Ask David Bergman. Hey everybody, thanks for joining me here on Adorama TV. Don't forget to subscribe down below. Uh, there's all kinds of great free photo content from Adorama and all the other hosts there. So I hope you'll join us every week right here. But we're here on Ask David Bergman, which means I'm David Bergman and I'm answering your photography questions. Uh, today I've got a really good one from Jason R. And he asks, my question has to do with backing up files and perhaps I'm going about it all wrong. I currently search my memory card for files that have the XMP extension, denoting that they have been edited, and then drag the corresponding RAW files to my backup drive. Is there a more efficient way to do my backups? Thanks so much, Jason. Yes, there is a more efficient way. Now, what it sounds to me like you're doing is you're actually working on your images on the card that you shoot from your camera. I highly recommend against that. that. Those cards are really kind of volatile, and you just want to use them to let the camera write to them when you're shooting. Then, as soon as you're done, after a shoot, whenever you can, as soon as possible, you want to get those images off there. Copy them into your computer and work on them in your computer. Don't touch them on the card if possible. So, once you're in the computer, I'm going to show you kind of how I manage my images and then how I back them up. Now, I did a video earlier in Ask David Bergman back when we were on Instagram TV on my photo mechanic workflow and how I cull through my images and get down from thousands of images into a really small amount that makes it more manageable. Uh, I'll put a link down below to that video, but the basic concept is that you want to, like I said, cull through and you want to, uh, instead of bringing all your images into your raw processor, which is Lightroom or I'm using Capture One, I used Aperture for many years, um, whatever program you use, um, you don't want to bring every single image into that program. So, because it just gets bogged down and you're not going to edit that many files anyway. So, let me show you what I do here. I have my uh, my screen open and what I will do is create a single folder. So, in this case, from this particular assignment, right now I'm on tour with Luke Combs, uh, the country singer all year long, and what I am doing is I have to go ahead and organize all, thousands and thousands of images. So, I create a single folder from every show. In this case, this was on October 26th in Sacramento. So I, I name it with the date, year, month, day, so that they sort properly when I have multiple folders. And then Luke Combs and then the city. So that's how I'm going to go ahead and organize this shoot. Now, the first thing I do is I'm going to copy all of my images into a single raw folder. Now, again, in that photo mechanic workflow, I show you how I rename and apply IPTC metadata. I'm not going to do that now, but these files have already been renamed. These are raw files, CR2 files, and this is every image that I shot, um, except for my remote cameras, which I actually wind up deleting 99% of those. But for the most part, this is everything I shot. This is over 25 hundred images. So that's a lot of files. I don't want to bring those into my raw converter. So what I will do is use photo mechanic to go through those and then the first pass I'm going to do, I'm just going to keep anything that's decent, anything that I want to see again, anything that I want to look at more closely. I'm going to do that as fast as I can. In this case, I got it down on my first pass to 542 images and I put those in my raw first edit folder. That um, folder is now sort of my my better images so if I ever need to go back to those images and find something I don't have to look at my entire raw take again I can just go to that raw first edit then I'm gonna call through those raw first edit images again until I get to my raw finals now in this case I'm down to 84 images so those 84 images are actually the ones that I'm going to bring into uh, my raw converter, Capture One in my case, Lightroom, Bridge, Photoshop, whatever it is that you use. So that way I only have to work on those images and then those files I'm then going to export uh, JPEGs of depending on what I need them for. Some of them are going to go to management, some of them are going to individual band members, wherever they're going, uh, PR, the, the venue people, whatever it is, I can then export those. You can see right here I have a final sent to management folder and that has my uh, JPEGs that I sent to the management uh, team and then I have to email those are ones that I sent to the band and the crew and, and um, different kind of people there so everything is nice neat and organized at the end of the day the whole point is that I have everything in this one nice neat folder so then that one single folder is all I have to worry about backing up I'm gonna take that entire folder and back it up now let's talk about backups that was your question to begin with I subscribe to the 321 backup methodology. What that means is three copies of any individual file, two separate devices, 
and one of them being off-site. So let me explain what I mean. Three copies, you definitely want three copies to have a back, be considered backed up. It's the safest way to do it. Just two is not really enough, especially if you have two of them physically close to each other or on the same hard drive. You know, if that hard drive dies, you're going to lose uh, both of those. Or if they're next to each other and there's a fire, flood, or theft, then you're going to lose both of those. So you really need three copies to be properly backed up. Now, you want two of them on two separate devices for exactly why I just mentioned. If those hard drives, uh, if those two images are, let's say, on the same hard drive, on your internal hard drive, and your computer gets stolen, well, then both images are gone. So that doesn't do you any good. You want them in two separate physical places. And then one of them should be off-site. That third one should be off-site so that if there is a fire or flood or something like that, um, you know, in your home, God forbid that happened, then you still would have everything off-site. When I'm on tour right now, it's a little tricky because I'm on the road. But what I do is I carry these little tiny bus-powered hard drives with me. This is the Lacie Porsche Design Drive. It's two terabytes. It's bus powered, so I don't have to plug it in. It just goes USB-C direct native into my MacBook Pro. And I have two of these with me. And I, what I do is I, can, I back up that one folder to both of those hard drives separately. A lot of people use RAID systems and complicated things like that. Listen, RAID is great for video when you need speed. And it, it certainly can be good for a home, you know, a big home uh, small office backup system. But look, I just keep it simple. I use the JBOD, just a bunch of drives. I have two separate drives, and I copy that one folder to each of those drives. Then I also use Photo Shelter, which is an online uh, company. They've uh, run my website for many, many years. I'm a big fan of theirs. Um, and they also have archive systems in place. So I can access my, I can upload and then access my RAW files and my JPEGs. What I do is I take just those final finals, my, my best images. I don't want to upload 2,500 files to that, but just my best images. I put my RAW files in one folder. I put my tone JPEGs in another. That way, when I'm on the road, if I get a request for an image that I don't have on my local drive, I can pull down the JPEG already ready to go. If I want to re-edit a photo, I can pull down the RAW file. I can also deliver to clients. I have separate folders for all the band members where they can get their images using the photo shelter system. So um, I all, at, the, at the end of the day, the bottom line is that I have copies on site. And by the way, these two drives that I have, um, when I, what I do is when I get back home, one of them stays in my apartment in New York City. The other one goes to an off-site storage unit in the city so that it's physically in a different place from the uh, copies that I have here. So I can always access everything here um, in my apartment, and then I, can, I have backups off-site. So that's how I manage my archive. It sounds complicated. It's really not once you get into your own system. Look, your images are your most valuable asset. They cannot be replaced. Your gear, hopefully it's insured. It would stink if it got lost or stolen, but it can all be replaced. The images cannot. So, Jason, thanks for the question. That's how I do my backups. I appreciate it. Listen, if you have a photo question, make sure you go to askdavidbergman.com. There's a form there. You can ask your own questions. I'll pick the best ones to answer right here on a future show. Again, don't forget to subscribe to Adorama TV right here on YouTube. I will see you back here on Ask David Bergman. Yes, of course, next week. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.